The latest figures from police forces show that there were more than 2,000 reports of drinks being spiked in the 12 months up to September last year, with a slightly greater number of cases of spiking by injection, which combined with other means of spiking, such as through food being tampered with, totaled just under 5,000 reports, although it's generally thought the problem is underestimated. The Nighttime Industries Association is among those calling for a specific crime of spiking to make it easier to report. Earlier, I spoke to Dawn Dines from the charity Stamp Out Spiking, and I began by asking her about the common misconceptions around spiking. Spiking can happen to anyone at any place at any time. And, you know, there, there is this misconception that people have had too much to drink when actually they've been drugged, they've been poisoned. And it can take on many forms, can't it? Because I know one of the first times this was reported, it was actually three students in Nottingham, wasn't it? And they were spiked in quite a different way. They were. This was the start of the needle spiking that we saw last year. And it started in Nottingham. I think the next place was Exeter in my home city. And, you know, just recently we've had an 89-year-old and a 63-year-old who got spiked at a wedding. And that happened through a cupcake. They put so much cannabis in this cake, one of them collapsed and they both got hospitalised. Uh, which sounds horrendous, um, but given the range and certainly the, the types of spiking that can happen and the fact that victims often don't remember very much of the time when they were spiked, how damaging is it? It is so damaging and this is why we all need to be working together on this. You know, if you've gone out for a night out, somebody's poisoned you, you're not going to have any idea of what happened to you, where you ended up, if you got sexually assaulted, if they filmed you. It's just like an invisible crime and it really needs us all to be working collaboratively so that we can make change. So what update, Dawn, do you want to see to the current law? Well, the law as it is, we've got the 1861 Act or 1862 Act. It just shows how many years ago it is. And, you know, surely this needs to be updated. This was an offence against the Parsons Act. We've also got poisoning with obnoxious substance. At the end of the day, spiking needs to be a recognised crime in its own right for the respect for the past victims, but also because then we can adequately train key emergency services. It's imperative that these points are really taken seriously and the law gets updated. And just finally, what advice would you give to anybody really who's going on a night out or, or maybe just to a wedding, like the two ladies that you mentioned earlier? You know, how, how do you keep yourself safe? You can go out, you can, we've got drink covers now, they've got nightcaps, they've got stop tops. You can go out and cover your drink from an opportunist. You can, if someone offers to buy your drink, go with them to the bar. And, you know, if you see somebody's doing something untoward to someone else, go and tell the security, go and tell, you know, the, the bar manager so that everybody is looking out for each other. Okay, we'll leave it there. Dawn, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.